So homemade decals are not for everyone and it has its limits, especially if you want to print white on an inkjet, forget it. But there are ways around that. So some modelers will leave their old decals in the sunlight and this does work, I've done it myself. But that's providing you have the sunshine to do this, as well as the time, it's not a quick method. The other option I've read are UV lamps. The equipment can vary in price, but the process does work to a point. But once again, it takes time. A week sometimes from what I've read. And of course, the other path will be to see if you can find replacements. With aftermarket offerings, not always available, and sometimes they're out of print. How about vinyl cutters? Yes, fine to a point, but I'd be pretty impressed if they could cut out a mask for this option. But I'm more than happy to be shown a video proving this is doable. Some old decals look okay, like these. I may just need a coat of this stuff to stop them from cracking. But of course, there is the other equation to think about. That is the quality of the old decals themselves. Look at these serial numbers. Very fluffy around the edge. Also, the logo leaves a lot to be desired. Very basic. Now surely I can improve the quality and detail of these decals to help the model not look its age. Not by adding low quality sun or UV clean decals. So let's crack on. First I'll scan the old decals, printer, flatbed and the extensions. Here I would use a PNG or JPEG extension at 600 dpi, dots per inch. Bring it into a photo software of your choice, tidy the image up and then go into Inkscape and draw it up and then go straight to the print stage. But I want to show you a tool in Inkscape which can be very useful sometimes. Now I need to tidy up the scan in Infinity, fade the yellowing out and sharpen the scan up, but unfortunately this software doesn't export bitmap files. Not required in this modern day and age, I'm told. So after cleaning up the scan, it's exported as a JPEG. And then I'll go through a secondary simple paint software just to export it as a bitmap file. Around the houses I know, but just in case anybody else has the same issue. So I'm bringing in a bitmap crop section of the scan under these settings. And in Inkscape, I can select a tool called Trace Bitmap. This brings me to a drop down menu, several tabs to choose from, but I'm selecting the single scan and then the brightness cut off. There are also sliders to help with the quality of the scan, and it is just a matter of messing around and finding out what works best. I'll click on the image and this gives me a preview. And if I'm happy with that, I'll click apply. And as you can see, the image has been what we called vectored, broken down into editable lines. But as you can see, it would take a month of Sundays to tidy all this up. And for me, there is an easier way. I'll quickly show the results from the color logo. Not good, but it may give someone a good starting point. But here's the punchline. Let me show you how good this tool can be. I have a fairly good image of the Ford logo. Saved as a bitmap file and then brought into Inkscape. Just like the serial number scan. So using similar settings as before, the results as you can see are brilliant. A nice, sharp, clean decal can be produced from this. Any size, any color. So it can work extremely well. So back to the serial number, and for me, it would be quicker to draw this up. But usually the first thing I would consider, is there a typeface that matches this? If not, then I'll go down the drawing stage. So bringing the image back in, I'm just going to create a new layer. I'll call this artwork. By doing this, I can lock the scan layer, which means I won't move it while drawing on the artwork layer. I've just brought in some guidelines to help keep everything plumb when drawing. So I'm just going to give you a rough idea how I go about drawing the text. Using the pen tool, I'll quickly draw an outline and then zoom in and tidy up. Then the hole. I'll just fill in the shapes and then I'll group them. 
This makes things easy to handle. Now because of the style of the serial number, I can duplicate this and rotate it and edit and draw the other shapes to match the scan. Here's an example how you can improve the decal. Look at the six and the eight. Now no disrespect to the original artwork, different world back then, everything was hand it. So let's look at the tri-motor, American Airways and the US Tex. The red decal is for the stand and from my point of view won't be needed. So here's the other avenue that can help you create your decal text by looking for a font close enough that can be manipulated quickly. Here I've found something close enough and will convert this text to paths from the menu and then ungroup it all and then by using the node tool I can adjust each character. Here I've taken out the fill colour just to make it clearer to adjust the text to match the scan. The M involved the most work here. Now for the logo, which I didn't realise how simplified it had been. Once again, it comes from different times, so no criticism here. But I managed to find a reasonably good image. Just shows you how, if you wish, you can improve the old model kit. Now if you can source a better image, great. But I'll show you what you can achieve with a reasonably low resolution image. So I'm just doing a bit of clean up here in Affinity, taking the white areas out and adding some clarity and some contrast to emphasize the colors. So here I'm bringing everything together on one page. And you can see how that cleaned up logo when reduced tightens up nicely. It looks really good. But one thing to bear in mind is that the more complicated and smaller the logo, the more chance all this may bleed. In other words, it may have to be simplified. So I'm just changing the page to A4 from the one the scan brought in. So everything is laid out, making sure I'm getting enough space around the artwork, but also being very conservative about the amount of decal paper I'm going to use. It's good, but it's not cheap. So my first print on paper, just to check, especially the colours. That end needs attention, but I think the colours look okay. So here's my second print, and I noticed that on a museum tri motor, the outer ring was blue, not red. But that doesn't mean that it's right. Also, I didn't know whether the Ford logo and text should have been in dark blue. So here we are, the decal paper I use. It comes in white and clear for ink jets, and I think they do one for laser printers too. So I've cut my clear decal sheet to shape. There we are, I got it right. But before I tape it down, I always give the surface a light clean with a little light of fluid, added with a cloth and not to the paper. This makes sure that there is no surface grime, otherwise it may affect the print. Then the decal paper is taped down with clean Tamiya tape. Now this is important that the tape is flush with the surface. You don't want any tape coming off in the printer, otherwise you're in big trouble. Now I have a manual feed on my printer, and this option is the best as the paper goes through a lot easier. Take it from the tray, it will have to bend back on itself to print. Less stress on the decal paper, is better. I'm selecting gloss here and the quality is set to high. Then print, then fingers crossed. So I'm happy with the end print and I'll leave it under cover for the ink to dry properly for some hours. I'll seal the dry ink in with some Tamiya gloss varnish, a few light coats first and I'm tilting the paper so the light catches the amount of varnish and the coverage going down. Very important. Then I'll let it dry before applying several more light coats. Then one final heavy coat. With the gloss thoroughly dry, I'm going to cut out a basic shape around the decal. Then with a brand new blade, I'm going to cut a neater shape around the decal, but making sure I'm only cutting through the film and not the paper. I find by doing this, I get less of an edge on the decal film. So with a little warm water, and for the long decals, I'll secure them down. Once again, I want to put as little stress on them as possible. It doesn't take long for the decal to release, and I'm just clearing off the excess film. Apply to a wet surface, then the excess squeezed out gently. Now most of you models apply decals to a gloss surface. 
I rarely do this. I prep the surface by giving it a light sand. Horses for courses. While I'm here, I just want to show you the limitations of the colours on certain painted backgrounds. The colours are more translucent on darker backgrounds. Now if you have a logo with a white background, I paint the white area on the model. I did this for the JU52 emblem. And by using the artwork as a template for a mask to be cut out. So the decals dry, you can see the results. Not bad for a surface that hasn't been prepped with gloss paint. So I'm going to show you the effect of some decal solutions on these decals. Here we have the Mark Fit Strong, Mix Decal Set, and the Micro Sole. Now I lost some footage showing the Mark Fit Strong, but I made another clip and we'll show you that shortly. The Micro Sole. Then the Mix Stuff. And then the mark fix stuff again. So let's just try the micro set and the soul. Set first. Then the decal, then the sole. Then I'll put that to one side to do its stuff. So the results, what do you think? So I've just cleaned the surface with a damp cloth of any solution residue and now I can apply a final varnish coat of my choice. So with the matte varnish applied, I think it looks good. So there you go, it can work to a point. And remember, it's not just about recreating whole decal sheets. The process can be used for bespoke projects as well, like the Sky Raider emblem, even helping create detail like the framework on the hurricane lights. So I hope this gives you something to think about. I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to catch you for the next video.